Okay, we're recording um, a session looking at um, using Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer and Affinity Publisher on a Windows 10 laptop, a Toshiba L630. Uh, probably about 16 years old this computer, just to prove that it does work. This is brilliant software, the Affinity packages, and if you are lucky enough to have a Mac and iOS, an iPhone device or iPad particularly, then Affinity runs on the iPad, it runs on the Mac, and it runs on Windows. And by using um, Apple iCloud, you can move documents between the two of them. Between the three of them, actually. Let me show you. Okay, Affinity Photo. Coming right up. Here's Affinity Photo starting up. There we go. Now, let's create a new file. I want to show you this new file. Oh, let's just do, where are we? A4 will do. There's a nice big A4 file. I don't know quite what size that is. Anyway, we don't need to worry. Let's have a look at the stock Type in C-I-T-Y. We're looking for a cityscape. There's a cityscape there. Let's just drag it onto the onto the palette. It'll just take a moment to load because it's coming across the network. Now there we go. You can see it there. Layers. There it is in the layers. Now we can bring that in there, so it's just on the on the edge. Bring that in there. You can see it's just outside the boundaries there. That's all right. Let's make it so that it's there and there. Drag it down a little bit, or if you like. We can go undo, undo, transform, undo, transform. Let's get rid of that altogether. There we go. Stock. Let's do that again. I'm looking to get the stock image its full size. Here we go. Loading slowly. There we go. Close that. We've got the layer. There it is there. Let's just copy that layer. File. New from clipboard. There's the full sized image. Too easy. Put that there. Selected there. There's our full size image. Okay. It hasn't got a name yet, but we're going to save it as. Save as. Now you can see I've got iCloud Drive enabled on this. Let's go to iCloud Drive. Go down to Affinity Photo. Date modified. So we've got the latest. There we go. Cityscape from Windows. I've already done one. I already baked this previously. So let's just save that and I converted it to black and white and saved it there. Now why I'm double double doing this is because the one I saved previously will now be uploaded. So it saved it and I'll show you on the Mac in a moment and on the iOS in a moment how we can retrieve that. So let's just close that Close the document. No, we don't want to save it. Close. No, we don't want to save it. And it's gone. File and exit. Now, let's have a look at the same thing in Designer. Brilliant software, this. Available very cheap. No subscriptions. And 
your iCloud subscription, of course that's to Apple, not Affinity, the iCloud subscription is really quite cheap. File, Open Recent, Cityscape Designer. There we go. There's the one I previously saved. Same thing, but this is in Designer. I used the same image. I probably could have used a different one. Save as. And now we go back to Affinity Designer. Date modified. And Cityscape Designer. It's already there because I saved that previously, remember? Okay, so I'll just cancel that. And we'll close that. Exit the whole thing. Do the same with Affinity Publisher. Unfortunately, Affinity Publisher is not available on the iPad yet, but it is coming sometime in the near future, I hope. Then you'll have all three apps on all three machines. Okay, now, as with the other two, I did this previously. This is one I baked in the oven previously. <laughs> How often have you heard that? Okay, now this should be coming up. It's a fairly big file. It's going to take a moment to load. While I'm doing that, while it's loading that, let's have a look at the iCloud. Now iCloud installs on your PC quite easily. Just go to the go to either you can either go to Apple and iCloud for Windows or go to what is it? The the uh, the store on Apple and just install it straight from the Windows. Sorry, straight from the Windows Store. Now the trick is when you install iCloud, and I've got a video on this uh, on my YouTube channel on how to install iCloud on your systems. It does take a long time to synchronize all the files. You can see over here the status of those files. They're all in different states. There's a little cloud means it's on the cloud. The little circle means it's here if I want to use it. But there's our Affinity photo. There's the cityscape we put on just a moment ago. There's Designer. And there's Publisher. Have we got our Publisher document back? There it is. There's the Publisher document. Now, when I save as, not exporting, mind you, saving as, goes to iCloud Drive and the Affinity Publisher folder that I set up. Now, you've got to make these folders. It's not smart enough to say, oh, yes, we're saving a publisher file. Let's make our own directory. You'd end up with directories everywhere. So make a directory, call it Affinity Publisher, and everything gets saved to that. Date modified. There we go. IDML, it's an IDML file. You are aware that that um, Affinity Publisher opens Adobe IDML files. Let's just cancel that because we don't want to spend any more time on this. This is showing you how you can use this fabulous software across three computers. File, close, file, exit, and we're back to there. How neat is that? And if you come back again later on, there's your documents sitting there in either Publisher, in Photo, or in Designer. And if you want to open them, too easy. Just double click on that and it opens right up in Affinity Designer because it's Affinity Designer file type. If you're on Photo, there we go, it's Affinity Photo. And the file type is, well, it says there it's a designer file, but it's not. This is just, <laughs> this is just Windows playing games. Okay, let's have a look and see what happens. What will that open it in? It'll probably open it in Designer. No, Affinity Photo. Ah, oh, there we go, because I just haven't told it. Always just use this app to open a photo files. There we go. And it's OK. Now when I come back, they'll be all Affinity Photo type files. There we go. No, it's going to open it in Designer, you stupid machine. OK.
But that proves another point I should have mentioned, and that is loading one document. Affinity Photo quite happily opens designer files. Affinity Designer quite happily opens photo files. Affinity Publisher quite happily opens all three of them. File, close, file, exit. Now they're designer files. Let's see if we can get to here. Properties. We want to change that to that. If I have photo files from now on, keep using this app. No, use Affinity Photo. OK. It's got the wrong icon there, but that's OK. That should go away. Apply. OK, now you can see Affinity Photo Files, they've all got the right icon on them. And mind you, I'm doing this on iCloud. There's Affinity Photo loading up. So iCloud, you, and you can save masses of storage on your PC by using the cloud. Of course, although it will appear to be on your system, for a little while it is. But if you don't open it for a while, it goes up to the cloud and stays there until you want it again. Give it time. And down it comes. OK, let's close that. We don't want to do anything with it. Let's close that now that everything's working in the right place. OK, let's move right across and have a look at the Mac. And see if we can access these files really easily. OK, continuing right along with our look at this brilliant software package, Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer and Affinity Publisher, we're now looking at it on the Mac. Now you'll recall just previously, we opened each one of these applications on the Windows 10 computer, Publisher, Designer and Photo, and saved a bit of work, just a, just a sample of what we can do, and saved it into the iCloud. Now, what we can do on the Mac is simply open those up. So let's have a look at Affinity Photo. We'll go up here, Affinity Photo, File, Open. Now this is a file that I began on the Windows machine. It's in iCloud, it's in a photo, it's in Affinity Photo, and there it is there. Cityscape from Windows. There's the black and white version. Well, let's open the black and white version. Open. Now this will come down from the iCloud, and there it is there. And you can see the original image is there, and there's the black and white adjustment that's been applied to it. I can tick that off. It's still there but it's just not being applied at the moment. And there it is there, applied, unapplied. Now, with this one, let's just save this because what we'll do is come to this on the iPad next, but we, we need to show that we're working across the devices. So this is what we're going to do. Just save it and it'll save the same file in the same place. So, Affinity Photo, let's close that, that file. We don't need it open because we're not using it anymore. And we've saved it with the adjustment not applied. So I'll hide photo. Now, we're still on the Mac. Let's have a look at Affinity Designer. Now, what have we got on here? File, open, and we're looking at the iCloud Affinity Designer. And there's our Cityscape Designer. And you can see on there, so let's open it and see what we've got. There's our Cityscape. 
Now, what can we do with this so that we can um, effects? Mm. We could put a Gaussian blur on it, radius. Now there's a very blurry, a very, a very blurry version. Let's just save that because when we come to iOS, file, save, remember that's in iCloud and it's in Affinity Designer. We've saved it, let's close it. Affinity Designer, let's hide it. And we're still on the Mac. Let's open Affinity Publisher. This was the third one we used. File, open, and where will it open from? Affinity Publisher on the iCloud. You can see that there. And there's our book, the Windows Test, Palvary Book Windows Test. Let's open it and see what we've got. Two, two, two. Okay, there's our text. Sample ebook. Couldn't be easier. File, save. Saving it to exactly the same place, same file name. Now that's saved, let's just close it. And Affinity Publisher. We'll hide that. Let's have a look in Finder. iCloud Drive. Affinity Designer. That's obviously not what we want, but we want to... Go right to the top, Cityscape Designer, and there it is. You can see that's the one we saved. It's very blurry because we, we made it very blurry. And that's what it looks like on the Mac. Now, if I was to open that up again on the Windows um, device, Windows 10, that would look just like that. They're absolutely interchangeable. Now, I don't know of any other software where you've got three applications like this that can all work together across all major devices. And not only that, but that's an Affinity Designer file. The other two, Affinity Publisher and Affinity Photo, will open that file quite easily. They each open each other's file types. So you're not limited to one or the other. Obviously, you can do different things in the different applications, but the file types are all openable. Now, how neat is that? Let me show you what that looks like. iCloud Drive, Affinity Publisher, eBook Test, open with Affinity Designer. Linked resource permission denied. That's only because it's looking for um, things that are embedded in the file. Authorized global access. Authorized to continue. There we go. Everything's in the right place. So it opened it up in Designer. Let's close that. We don't want to save it. File, open. Where's iCloud Drive? Affinity.
what's happened to affinity photo? Oh. Affinity photo. Date modified. Cityscape. Now we're in designer, remember? Cityscape from Windows. We're going to open an affinity photo file. Open. There it is. How easy is that? I don't know of any other software that allows you to do that, but I could be wrong. And there we go. Everything you need to know about the Mac. Now, let's move right along and have a look at those same files on the iOS, on the iPad. See you in a moment. Okay, here we are on the iPad. Now this is an iPad mini. Works the same, of course, on the full-sized iPads of various types. But again, we're looking at Affinity, and we've got Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer. Of course, the iPad, as I mentioned, Affinity Publisher doesn't work on the iPad yet. I mentioned that before. It is coming, but uh, it's a big job, so they'll get around to it. But meantime, we've got Affinity photo and we just load that up now we might have started this um, job on the windows computer in the in the outside office if you like we moved it to the desktop where we worked on it in the on the mac for a little while and now we're going to continue with it um, right where we are affinity photo <coughs> And we're in the office. Now there's the cityscape from Windows originally. Let's just load that up. It's coming down from the iCloud. You can see at the top there, the iCloud drive. There it is there. Let's have a look. And there it is applied. The black and white adjustment. Take it off. That's gone. Of course, there's no adjustment. And there's our original image back. And you can make adjustments to that. Let's just go over there and save that. Now it's saved back to the iCloud so that either of those apps on the Mac or on the Windows 10 box or Windows 11 now, if you have it, opens quite comfortably. Let's have a look at the designer one. We'll get right out of that. This is really simple. It's getting to this stage, isn't it? how you can work across all three devices. Let's load this up. Open from the cloud. It's not in downloads, it's in Affinity Designer. There we go, Cityscape Design. That's the one we were looking at. You can see the icons coming up. You can see the little wheel at the right there. It's just downloaded it from the cloud. And there it is there with that with that um, function enabled. Take off the Gaussian blur that we applied in on the other device. I, th I forget now, did we put that on on the desktop, on the Mac or the Windows? Doesn't matter. Gaussian blur is applied again, the same level of blur, and there it is taken off. Because we don't want the, the blur on there. Nice picture of buildings with a very nice blue tint to it. We just save that so if we go back to it in the office or wherever the various devices are, scattered around the world for that matter because you're using iCloud. You're using Affinity Publisher, Affinity Photo or Affinity Designer. And as I mentioned, they all open each other's files. Let's have a look. We're in Designer. Open from the cloud, go back to there, open Affinity Photo, Cityscape from Windows, black and white photo, we're in Designer, but it's opening it all the same. Now, of course, you've got different features in there, but the one thing you have got, Gaussian Blur, it's not affecting it, you see. But there it is, you can turn it off. Or turn it on, just the same as you could in photo. 
Now, I don't want to save that, so I'll just go along here and close it. There it is, original Cityscape Designer. That's the designer one. And there's some other work I've been doing there. Now, that's as re easy as that across all three devices. Because what you're looking at, let's bring up this. There's Affinity Designer on the iCloud, Cityscape Design. Affinity Photo, Cityscape Design. Affinity Publisher. Oh, look at that. There's an AF pub file. Can we open that? Let's see if we can. And it's saying, yes, there's a, there's a, a look at it. But the interesting thing with Affinity Designer, let's open Affinity Designer, open from the cloud, go back there, go to Affinity Publisher, and there's our Windows Test Publication. And there it is, missing resources. Yes, yes, we know that. Would you like to locate them? No, I'm not interested. But you can see, you remember uh, just previously I typed in sample book. Well, that's so you know. Now, the interesting thing about Affinity Designer, see down here, you've got pages. Tap that, there's all the pages we've got. Page one, page five. You can actually work on an Affinity Publisher file in Affinity Designer. Too nice. Last page, page 18. Let's just close that. And that's all there is to it. Isn't that marvellous? Now, Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer and Affinity Publisher don't require any subscription. Apple iCloud, of course, that's where they all work as well as on Windows, does require a small subscription. I think it's about $5 a month for more gigabytes than you're ever likely to use. Um, and it's so transparent. Unlike the other file sharing platforms where you have to share a file, copy a file, lock a file, move a file, and they never seem to synchronize when you want them to. Once you've got um, once you've got Apple iCloud synchronized, you're way in front. The only caveat is that when you first put um, iCloud on your Windows machine, it can take a really long time. I mean, days. If you've got thousands of photographs, I think I've got 53,000 photos in my photo folder. If you put Affinity Photo on as well as, um, if you put iCloud Photos on as well as iCloud Drive, it can take days for them to synchronise because it just does them quietly in the background. It doesn't do them in one huge block and soak up all your bandwidth. It's very good like that. It just puts a few up, a few up, a few up like that. The same with when you're working. If you save a file to the iCloud, a file will go almost instantly. If you're trying to grab a block of files, like many of them, it can take a little while. But once you get used to it, it's fantastic. So... There you go. That's all there is to working with Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer and Affinity Publisher across three devices, Apple, Windows uh, and iOS. Well, Apple iPad, Apple Mac and Microsoft Windows. You can use all three platforms and you can license your software for each of those platforms. Why would you use anything else, I ask you. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. That's it for today.